Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Here's the way I did the fuel system or the lines here from the firewall to the valve. Um, there's the fitting and the, the line up there. That was the, um, I guess that was the first line that I made once I had the uh, Red Cube FT60 installed. Um, I had to move that bracket forward. You can see the set of holes right there and there that are filled with rivets. That's where the original skin was already pre-punched and dimpled. That bracket was not installed yet because you had to put nut plates on it depending on which fuel sender or which fuel flow sender you used. So they had uh, allowance for flow scan which I don't think you can get anymore or the red cube. So that's not riveted down when you get it as a quick build and definitely not as a standard build. So anyway I I moved it forward because uh, the whole deal here, if you've seen the last one or two videos, the, the pump is different now from the older pumps, which uh, according to Don, this is uh, actually a three-year-old design, so it's not exactly new, but Vans just hasn't updated the, the design or the plans yet. Not a big deal, but uh, you're going to have to make some changes here on a quick build and probably even on the pre-punched skins of a standard build. So Red Cube then then that fitting there came pre-made with the pump kit which included the pump the filter and that one fitting that was pre-built it's uh, kind of a trick making something that short because you can't get the flaring tool on to the end of the pipe because you got to have all of the fittings stacked up on there to do the second one the first one's okay because you can slide it straight on but if there's any kind of bend you're not going to be able to do it so that fitting was stock then I had to move the um, mounting bracket underneath of the pump there you can't really see it but it's uh, it's basically centered up underneath of the, of the pump and all that's that's the way it comes uh, this is different from the older style where um, I don't remember now exactly how it worked but there was a fuel return line that's not returned to the tank this is a different thing this is just to cool the pump so the way this is designed here, I believe, if you kind of look at it, you can you can see that it's pumping fuel out of here. So then it's also bypassing through here and going back down through the pump and then cycling around this way to cool the pump. And then uh, that's already installed. This whole thing, is, that's how it comes out of the box. And I had to make that fitting. And you can see I, I tried to put a little bit of a bend in there to get these square because I didn't have to remove and relocate that bracket but it didn't line up right because I wanted to come straight off of here and because I had such a short run from the red cube to there to there uh, it kind of dictates the, the alignment so I had to do something somewhere and that's where I decided to try it. Um, my trick was to actually put that in the vise and then lean on it a little bit and I'll just have to look at this real close when I fill the thing full of fuel the first time to make sure I don't have any leaks in here, which would be standard practice anyway. Then the filter, and then here's the last line here going up and around to the elbow, which is a difference in the plans now. Um, you can kind of see it there. But uh, 45 elbow coming out of there with the fitting on there. That's the last one to make. And probably you want to start attaching, starting up here and working your way back because you got the most flexibility to, to yank around on that line to get it to line up the way you want. Um, one of my tricks here was when I located the, the bracket underneath of there, I had everything like you see it here without the bracket right there. This was just kind of hanging. I knew that was in about the right spot because I had it under there when I was doing my trial fit. But then... When I was ready to locate it, I put some super glue on the bottom of that bracket and I lifted up on the pump a little bit, slid the bracket underneath there, pressed it down, let the glue set, and then I was able to take everything off and the bracket stayed where it was and I was even able to drill the first two holes without it moving and put Clecos in those and then do the other two. My second little tip on something like this, um, to drill those new holes, how are you going to dimple that skin? So the way I do it is with a rivet gun set on low pressure so it's sort of acting like a hammer and then I have somebody hold a bucking bar on the top side that has a hole drilled in it and then I can insert the female dimple die, have the uh, 
the C-frame set holder in the rivet gun underneath there with the male die and then you can uh, tap that uh, dimple into there. You'll just uh, pull the trigger slow. You want to go real easy on that. You don't want to hit it hard like a rivet and you'll hear it change just like you do when you use the C-frame tool. Um, I think that's about it for now. Um, be sure and ask questions in the comments if you got them. Um, I might try to do a little background on me and, and why I'm building the 10. Uh, some of you know I've got a 6. I like the 6. I don't want to get rid of the 6. Um, and in fact, this airplane is uh, in back of my mind kind of targeted. I got somebody in mind that uh, I'm hoping will partner in or buy it from me when I get it done, and then I can kind of borrow it if I want a four place airplane. But anyhow, that's where I'm at. Uh, that's your RV10 update. We'll see you next time.